Welcome to this video of 11th grade biology. We are already doing a unit on diversity in the living world and we've already covered uh, some basic information like what is a kingdom, phylum, class, order, genus, species, all that and what is the binomial nomenclature and how names are given, what is biodiversity and what are some of the ways in which uh, biodiversity can be um, you know, accounted how everything can be organized. We talked about herbariums, zoological parks, botanical gardens and all that. In this video, we are going to do a major concept of diversity, which is basically biological classification. So get ready to take lots of notes. We will try to cover all the major uh, categories today itself in this video. So the agenda that we have for this video is we'll discuss about Kingdom Monera, after that Kingdom Protista, after that we will move on to Kingdom Fungi, and then the major ones, the Plant Kingdom, and then the Animal Kingdom. After that we will also be doing little information session on viruses, viroids and lichens. Now let's see if you remember or not who gave the binomial system of nomenclature. A binomial if you remember I hope you remember the binomial nomenclature means the name of a species will have two components. One is the generic name, one is the specific name. That means the generic name gives you the genus and the specific name gives you the species. For example Homo is the genus and species is sapiens. Okay, so the genus and the species are covered. The person who was responsible for this was Carolus Linnaeus. He gave us the binomial system of nomenclature. And in his time, only two kingdoms were recognized, the plants and the animals. Uh, till quite recently, it was developed, but now we have started to also go according to the five kingdom classification. So we'll do a brief idea of how basically uh, those kingdoms are classified. What is the basic criteria? So you may want to take down notes on this. What are the common characteristics that we focus upon? There are basically five characteristics. First is the cell type. Second is the presence or the absence of a cell wall. The third thing is a feature of the nuclear membrane. If you remember, that is part of the nucleus that covers it, that encloses it. Then the fourth feature on the basis of which these can be separated is body organization. And then the mode of nutrition. How do they actually get nutrition? So you can make a table and let's divide it into the four king five kingdoms. We have Monera, all right, and then we have Protista, Fungi, Plants, or Plant Kingdom or Kingdom Plantae, and at the end we have the Animal Kingdom. So what is the cell type? So I won't be going into details of what is a prokaryotic cell, what is a eukaryotic cell, but just remember that only Monera has a prokaryotic cell, rest all of them have a eukaryotic cell. So that is one difference between them. What about the cell wall? Now in animals, cell wall is completely absent. What about plant kingdom? Cell wall is present, but it's made up of cellulose. In fungi, it is present, but there is no cellulose in the cell walls. What about protista? Protista only in some. In some it is there, in some it is not. So we'll go into that when we do the details on kingdom protista. What about the cell wall in kingdom monera? It is there, but it does not have any cellulose. What instead it has is polysaccharides and amino acids. So that is the composition of the cell wall in case of Kingdom Monera. What about nuclear membrane? Now nuclear membrane is absent here, it's present in all the others. 
So remember only kingdom monera is the one that does not have any nuclear membrane. What about body organization? Now this one is cellular. That means only one cell. In this it can either be multicellular or it can have some kind of loose tissue. All right. For example, you have the mold that grows on bread. On the other hand, you have mushrooms that you can eat. So both of them are included. In plants and animals, you have tissues and you have organs. And in animals, apart from tissues and organs, you can even have systems. For example, circulatory system, pulmonary system, excretory system, digestive system. Uh, all right, so nervous system, for instance. So all these systems are made of organs. The organs are made up of tissues. And what about mode of nutrition? This is in Kingdom Monera autotrophic. It can either depend on chemical synthesis or uh, you know light-based synthesis, which is photosynthetic. It can also be heterotrophic. That means information uh, getting nutrition from others. For example, saprophytes or parasites. What about proto protista? That can be autotrophic and it can be heterotrophic both. What about fungi? It is usually heterotrophic only. Can be of two types. One is saprophyte. One is parasitic. Autotrophics are generally there in plants. That means they make their own food. That is the basic definition of plants that we are told in our younger classes that plants are organisms that make their own food. And animals, heterotrophic. So all kinds of insects, worms, plants, uh, not plants, but birds, animals, all these are part of animalia. It can be either holozoic, like human beings. We just take in food. Or it can be, can be saprophytic also, taking nutrition for, from something else. All right, so all these kinds of nutrition modes are present. So basically, in all, this is the difference between those five kingdoms. So either you can pause this video and revise them once again, you can replay it, or you can just keep listening to the same video again and again. Now, who was the person responsible for the five kingdom classification? That was R. H. Whittaker. In the year 1969, which is not very, very old, he proposed the five kingdom classification. He was the one who thought that there are some species, some organisms that don't fall clearly into one of these two, the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom. You need to have some more kingdoms. And the main kind of criteria that we have just done right now for classification, those were the criteria that were used by Whittaker. That means cell structure, organization, nutrition, reproduction, and all that. So we've already done a comparative account on what are the different characteristics of these systems. We'll do everything in a little more detail now. So the first kingdom that we are going to start with is the kingdom Monera. Now bacteria are the most abundant microorganisms and that is why it was important to put all of them into a separate kingdom. Now most of the bacteria they are grouped into four categories according to their shape. They can either be in shape of little balls all right or it can be in the shape of rods for example like this or it can be in the shape of spirals all right so we call them spirulum they can be like this like a lightning bolt they can also be in the shape of a comma so we call them vibrium like this or like this. So this is just a rudimentary way to classify the bacteria. Now, bacteria, if you know, they can live in extreme habitats. They can live in the hottest of the environments and even survive in the coldest of all climates. But basically, how do we characterize them? We can characterize them into lots of types. The first one is archaebacteria. Now, you should know archae stands for old. That's how you get words like archaeology or archive or archaeopteryx. Now these bacteria, they live in the harshest of all climates. That is why they've been able to survive. They can live in extremely salty areas. In that case, they'll be called halophiles. H 
Halo means salt, like in halogen, phyle means love. So if they are living near salt, they will be called halophiles. If they are living near hot springs, they will be called thermoacidophiles. If they love living near hot springs, if they like living near marshy areas where lots of um, methane is present, then they will be known as methanogens. All right, so that is some of the examples. And the next kind of bacteria that you have is so that is eubacteria. Now, eubacteria is also known as true bacteria. So, you may get a question on that. Uh, the basic characteristics of this kind of bacteria are they've got a really stiff cell wall. And sometimes they've got a flagellum. Flagellum is like a thread, basically, hanging out of um, their wall. And if flagellum is there, it's going to be motile. That means it can move. Now, some examples of this are bacteria that have got um, some chlorophyll in them. All right, these are photosynthetic bacteria, for example, cyanobacteria. Cyano is a mixture of green and blue. So, that is a component of blue-green blue algae. All right, some other kinds of uh, bacteria are there. For example, chemosynthetic bacteria that can fix nitrogen. Or that can also synthesize some other kind of chemicals, chemosynthetic bacteria. You even have some kind of heterotrophic bacteria. These are basically the decomposers. Alright, they are very important. They help in, for instance, making curd from milk. How do you make curd from milk? It's because of these bacteria. Alright. And then there are also certain organisms that deserve attention over here which is mycoplasma. Let me write that again. Now, mycoplasma are those organisms that do not have a cell wall. Cell wall is absent in them. They are the smallest living cells that can live without oxygen. So that you should know, the smallest living cells that can survive without oxygen also. And they are lots of times responsible for spreading diseases to humans and other animals. So that is mycoplasma. And that was all about Kingdom Monera that you need to know. That it is composed of bacteria. Two kinds of bacteria. One is archaebacteria that can live in the harshest climates. For example, salt, hot springs or where methane is found. And one is eubacteria, also known as true bacteria that have a cell wall and sometimes have a flagella. All right, and examples of that is cyanobacteria, chemosynthetic bacteria, heterotrophic bacteria that act as decomposers. And then we learned something about mycoplasma, which is the smallest living cell that can live without oxygen. They don't have a cell wall and are responsible for lots of diseases. The next important kingdom that you have to know about is Kingdom Protista. Now, Kingdom Protista has all single-celled eukaryotes. If you remember the classification that we did, all the single-celled eukaryotic bacteria or all the eukaryotes, they are under this kingdom of Protista. All right. Um, in my mistake, there's no bacteria in this because all the bacteria are part of Monera. This is a separate case only. All right, it could be photosynthetic also or it could be something else also. So lots of different uh, further categories are there. For example, we start with the first one, which is chrysophytes. So what exactly are chrysophytes? It includes diatoms and golden algae. The other name of golden algae is desmids. Alright, they're found in fresh water and they're found in marine water as well. They also float in the form of plankton. Most of them are photosynthetic. In diatoms, cell walls form two overlapping shells, like in case of this and this. So it forms like a box kind of a structure, just like a soap box. 
all right the walls are embedded with silica so this wall has silica so they are almost indestructible so lots of dye atoms are left behind a um, lot of cell wall deposits are found in their habitat and after a lot of time after like billions of years all that deposit comes to known as diatomaceous earth so that is basically the cell walls of all these animals of all these uh, protists or single celled eukaryotes diatomaceous earth it's quite gritty in nature because it's very stiff and diatoms are the main primary producers of the oceans the next that you need to know is about dinoflagellates quite a funky name dino and then you have flagellates so obviously they will be having a flagellum they can be both marine and they're also photosynthetic it could be green yellow brown it depends on what kind of pigments are there inside their cells lots of stiff cellulose plates are there in the outer surface of the cell wall and most of them have got two flagella one is longitudinal one is transverse like in the mid section and lots of uh, red dinoflagellates they undergo very quick multiplication and sometimes because of that reason the sea can appear red in color but you need to be beware of them because sometimes they can release lots of toxins in large numbers and that can kill lots of marine animals such as other fish the third component of this kingdom is euglenoids so let me highlight its dinoflagellates chrysophytes and then you have euglenoids now what is euglenoid euglenoid is basically freshwater organism they don't have a cell wall but they have a protein rich layer called a pellicle a pellicle full of proteins is present there is no cell wall present in them and their body is quite flexible because of that even they have two flagella one is long the other one is short they are photosynthetic but if they don't get sunlight they can even predate on smaller organisms all right the best example of this is euglena the next part of protista the next category of uh, organisms under protista the fourth one is slime molds all right now what are the characteristics these are saprophytic means they act as decomposers additionally they move along decaying parts of leaves and animals they ingest all the organic water and the organic material they can even grow and form an aggregation called plasmodium that can even increase its length or several feet i know that would be surprising for you or it plasmodium is the aggregation and that can grow and spread over several feet and when the conditions are not so favorable the plasmodium can differentiate and form different fruiting bodies so let's suppose this is the plasmodium different fruiting bodies at the different tips and these will have spores in them these spores have a proper cell wall and they help in survival for many years and these will help in reproduction later on the other part of this kingdom protista is going to be the protozoans so protozoans are all heterotrophs they are either predators means they directly ingest other things other organisms or they can be parasites means just like a parasite they will find a host and live on that there are basically four major groups one is amoeboid which is just like amoeba so we call them amoeboid protozoans let me correct the spellings here the second one that we have is flagellated the third one we have is ciliated and the fourth one we have is sporozoans so that is the overall view of kingdom protista basically it has five important components you have chrysophytes dinoflagellates and then you have slime molds 
you have protozoans and you have euglenoids. So you need to remember these parts. Euglenoids that have a pellicle which is full of proteins do not have a cell wall. Usually two flagella, one long, one short example is euglena. What happens in protozoans? All heterotrophs either predate or they are parasitic. Four types, amoeboid, flagellated, ciliated and sporozoans. What about slime molds? They are saprophytic and they also form a structure like plasmodium that has many tips and spores on those tips. Those spores have a true cell wall and as a result they are able to survive for a long period of time. After that you have dinoflagellates. As the name suggests, they've got two flagella, one is long, one is traverse. And the first one that we did was chrysophytes, which is of two components or two parts, diatoms that have a box-like structure with two walls and they also help in a phenomenon called diatomaceous earth because of lots of silicon deposits in their cell walls. And the other one is golden algae, also known as desmids. So that is all for this video. We'll be continuing with the kingdoms in the next video. And we'll be discussing kingdom fungi, plants and even the animal kingdom. Thank you so much for watching this video.